Hello, my dear students. This is Dr. Rami Khan of Concept Chemistry classes. Uh, today in this video, I am going to explain about P block elements. P block elements are those elements which are present in group 13 to group 18 in the periodic table. Group 13 and 14, they are in 11 standard, while group 15 to group 18, they are in 12 standard these are in 12 standard so in this particular video i am going to cover group 15 only group 15 elements are nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony and bismuth group 16 are oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium and polonium while group 17 are halogens fluorine chlorine bromine iodine and statin group 18 elements are helium neon argon krypton xenon and radon they are group 18 elements okay <coughs> now Group 15 elements which are called nitrogen family are also called calcogens, sorry, they are called nicogens, nicogens. Why these elements are called nicogens? Because they are poisonous, right? They are poisonous. Therefore, this group 15 elements are called nicogens, while group 16 elements, they are called calcogens calcogens because they are present in the form of ores or minerals therefore they are called calcogens while group 17 elements are called halogens because they are present as sea salts samudra ka salt ki form the most present whatever and group 18 elements are called noble gases or inert gases or zero group elements since they are very very inert and they do not react with other elements so uh, i'm going to start <coughs> nitrogen family now okay nitrogen family in nitrogen family let us discuss about atomic radii first atomic radii increases from top to bottom generally and in this case nitrogen then phosphorus when nitrogen okay plus wait okay from nitrogen to phosphorus the increase in size is very large while from phosphorus to arsenic the increase is slightly less from arsenic to, arsenic to antimony again the increase is less while from antimony to bismuth again the size increase in size is again less there is increase in size but the increase is less this increase this small increase in size from phosphorus to arsenic arsenic to antimony antimony to bismuth is due to poor shielding by the electrons in d and the f subcells this is given here okay okay now let me zoom this area this is it is written here this atomic radii increases down the group only a small increase from arsenic to bismuth due to poor shielding effect by the dnf electrons okay okay now <clears throat> let us discuss about oxidation state oxidation state before oxidation state let me write the general electronic configuration of general electronic configuration of group 15 elements group 15 elements has this general electronic configuration ns2 np3 
okay they have five valence electrons and if these three electrons from np outermost p n is outermost shell and th if these three electrons from p go out for bonding then the they will show plus three oxidation state and uh, along with these three elements uh, three electrons if these two ns electrons also go out for bonding then they will show plus five oxidation state so generally group 15 elements they show plus they show plus three and plus five oxidation states now uh, stability of this plus three and plus five oxidation state let me explain that uh, their stability this is very important for the examination so down the group from nitrogen to bismuth stability of plus three oxidation state increases while stability of plus five oxidation state decreases this is due to inert pair effect this is due to inert pair effect and the inert pair effect is due to again pore shielding by the electrons in d and the f electrons stability of stability of plus three oxidation state increases down the group due to inert pair effect which is the inability of the two outermost s electrons to participate in bone formation so uh, between this ns and the np there comes actually d n minus 1 d 10 and n minus 2 f 14 in some cases in case of bismuth actually so these electrons they do not shield the ns electron so the two electrons in ns outermost s orbital these two electrons they do not have tendency to go out for bone formation so in the heavier elements in case of antimony and bismuth they these two elements they show plus three oxidation state only but they can show plus five oxidation state but but their stability is less okay next point is ionization energy ionization energy decreases from nitrogen to bismuth this is general trend next property is chemical reactions now with hydrogen these group 15 elements form hydrides of the formula e h3 okay this hydride these hydrides are given here ph3 s a s h3 n h3 s b h3 b i h3 these are the hydrides formed by combining with hydrogens so in these hydrides they have this generally structure okay let me draw the general structure this is e and uh, they have this geometry and this e the central atom has a lone pair of electron so uh, in exam the properties of these hydrides are frequently asked so the first and the most important property of these hydrides is boiling point now boiling point what about boiling point boiling point depends upon intermolecular force of attraction so this intermolecular force of attraction again depends upon atomic or oh sorry uh, molar mass of the substance and the molar mass increases from nh3 to bih3 right so in this case <coughs> boiling point must increase from ammonia to bih3 but the actual order is not like this the actual order is this one ph3 comes first then ash3 nh3 then sbh3 and bih3 now the question can be asked here ammonia has higher boiling point than ph3 and the ash3 why it is because of hydrogen bond between ammonia molecules in ammonia molecules there is hydrogen bond hydrogen bonds so due to that hydrogen bond which is very strong intermolecular force of attraction ammonia has higher boiling point than ph3 and the ash3 but ammonia has lesser boiling point than sbh3 and bih3 because 
their molar mass is very very large okay this is very important for examination okay now next property is bone angle bone angle has a regular trend that is nh3 bone angle of nh3 is largest this is because this is the structure of nh3 let me give you the reason for this order and suppose this is ph3 this is ph3 bone angle is the angle between two bonding pairs this is a bonding pair this is another bonding pair and the angle between these two bonding pairs is called bone angle here also this is the bone angle right so in case of nh3 nitrogen has higher electronegativity than hydrogen in ph3 also phosphorus has higher electronegativity than hydrogen but nitrogen has higher electronegativity than ph3 so, so the pool of these two electrons by nitrogen will be more than the pool of these two electrons by phosphorus so these two shared pair of electrons come closer to nitrogen so since these two shared pair of electrons are closer to each other the repulsion between them is large the repulsion between them is large since the repulsion between them is large bone angle becomes higher so uh, bone angle decreases from ammonia to bih3 due to decrease in electronegativity you can write okay due to decrease in electronegativity from nitrogen to phosphorus to arsenic to antimony to bismuth okay basicity okay basicity is the property of giving out this lone pair of electron to someone to an acid actually so nitrogen has higher electronegativity than this phosphorus so this nitrogen pulls more electrons from hydrogens so this nitrogen has higher electron density as compared to phosphorus so it can give out more electrons in comparison to phosphorus so therefore ammonia has higher basicity than ph3 and rest of the hydrides okay now the last property is bone dissociation energy bde is bone dissociation energy bone dissociation energy is the energy required to break this bone this bone nh bone and this ph bone so uh, this again decreases from ammonia to BiH3. The reason is the increase in atomic size from nitrogen to phosphorus, then arsenic, then antimony and bismuth. Okay. Uh, uh, let me explain this. This is supposed nitrogen and this is our hydrogen. Okay. And in case of pH3, this is phosphorus and this is hydrogen. So the bone angle, sorry, sorry bone length from here to here is shorter while in case of ph bone this bone angle is larger and in case of ash3 this would be again larger so bone angle uh, bone length is again higher so higher the bone length okay weaker the bone will be therefore the energy required to break this bone will be lesser than the energy required to break this Bone. this is in case of NH3 right so decrease in bone dissociation energy from NH3 to BiH3 is because of increase in atomic size right these are the some important properties of hydrides of group 15 elements right okay now <clears throat> now uh, let me come to the next next property that is reactivity with oxygen so with oxygen these hydrides these elements of group 15 they form oxides of these two types e2o3 and e2o5 for example i can say n2o3 and n2o5 right p2o3 and p2o5 okay so the pentoxide this is the pentoxide the pentoxide is more covalent and more acidic than the trioxide e2o3 as as e2o5 has 
higher oxidation state. In case of N2O3, nitrogen has plus 3 oxidation state, while in case of N2O5, nitrogen has plus 5 oxidation state. So, due to higher oxidation state of nitrogen, this N2O5 has more acidic as well as more covalent character than N2O3. Okay. Now, what about if I want to compare the acidic nature of these two pentoxides? So, in this case also nitrogen has plus 5 oxidation state, while in P2O5 phosphorus also has plus 5 oxidation state. So, uh, between these two pentoxides, which one will be having more acidic as well as more covalent nature? That depends upon the electronegativity of this nitrogen and phosphorus. Nitrogen has higher electronegativity than phosphorus. So, therefore, this N plus 5 will have higher tendency to accept electron. Acid is that substance which can accept electron, while base is that substance which can give out electron. Okay, so N2O5, N2O5 nitrogen has plus 5 oxidation state, and this N plus 5 ox, uh, and this N plus 5 has higher tendency to accept electron. So this N2O5 will be more covalent and more acidic nature than P2O5. Right? Okay. And the uh, next property, next point in this oxide is this one. Oxides of nitrogen and phosphorus are acidic. These oxides which I have written now, they are acidic in nature, while those of arsenic and antimony are for amphoteric. Amphoteric, amphoteric is that uh, property which uh, you know of elements or of compounds which can show both acidic as well as basic character right or we can you, know, you can say which can react with both acid as well as base and the oxides of bismuth are basic in nature right okay uh, in oxides of nitrogen let me mention you one important point that is N2O this is nitrous oxide this is NO, this is nitric oxide and this is N, um, NO, N2O3, let me write N2O3 first, then N2O4 you can say or you can just write NO2, these two are same, this is dimer of NO2 and lastly N2O5. These are the oxides of uh, nitrogen actually. And between these five oxides, five or six oxides of nitrogen, the first two nitrous oxide and nitric oxide, nitric oxide, okay, they are um, neutral, they are not acidic, they are neutral, while remaining oxides of nitrogen, they are acidic in nature, right. This is also called ha ha gas, that is laughing gas, okay, ha ha ha. Okay, now let me go to the next property that is reactivity of group 15 elements with halogens. Uh, but with halogens, they form two halides that is EX3 and the EX5, right? EX3, let me give one example PCl3 and uh, PCl5, right? Nitrogen does not show this EX5 means nitrogen has this oxide NCl3 but nitrogen does not have this oxide NCl5 does not exist. This is due to absence of d orbitals in nitrogen right. So nitrogen does not form pentahalide due to non availability of d orbitals in its valence shell. Pentahalides this pentahalide is more covalent than trihalides because of higher oxidation state. Higher is the oxidation state of the central atom, higher will be the covalent nature. Okay? In PCl5, phosphorus has plus 5 oxidation state, while in PCl3, phosphorus has plus 3 oxidation state. Okay? Okay, these are some uh, important points about this uh, means compounds of group 15 elements. Now, <clears throat> we let us go to 
nitrogen so in uh, for nitrogen they can nitrogen can be pre prepared in the laboratory in small amount by reacting with ammonium chloride with sodium nitrite so our nitrogen is formed and if we want to prepare pure nitrogen then we can just uh, heat this compound ban3 hole twice ban3 hole twice is called barium azide barium azide right so this barium azide when it is heated this azide decomposes to barium and nitrogen so barium will be uh, solid and uh, the gas evolved will be our nitrogen gas right so instead of barium azide we can also take sodium azide NaN3 this is our sodium azide and if it is thermally decomposed we will get sodium and nitrogen this will be our balanced chemical reaction okay so uh, here are some more uh, reactions from which we can prepare nitrogen okay so let me go to the next point this is again <coughs> one more reaction to prepare nitrogen okay next is properties of nitrogen di nitrogen okay Nit nitrogen is restricted to a maximum covalency of four this is very uh, frequently asked in exam in both cbsc and council exam the question will be why so answer will be because only four orbitals 1 s and uh, 3 p orbitals will be there in case of nitrogen only four orbitals are available for bonding due to this reason uh, indirectly you can say we do not have these subcell or the orbitals in nitrogen therefore nitrogen cannot have uh, cannot have pentavalent or cannot have uh, covalency of more than four right question can be anything like that okay next is <clears throat> next property of uh, nitrogen is formation of nitrites so we can react nitrogen with calcium and uh, this uh, the mixture will, must be heated to form calcium nitrite this is calcium nitrite and uh, with oxygen nitrogen forms nitric oxide and this nitric oxide is formed only if we heat the gaseous mixture at 2000 kelvin this is a very very high temperature because nitrogen also has you know these three bonds between the two nitrogen atoms and oxygen also has two bonds between the two oxygen atoms so in order to react between these two elements these three bonds and these two bonds they have to be broken so therefore a large amount of energy has to be supplied right and uh, one important reactivity of nitrogen is when nitrogen is heated with calcium carbide this is calcium carbide okay then calcium cyanamide is formed along with carbon this is calcium cyanamide c a c n whole twice is calcium cyanide this is not calcium cyanide this is calcium cyanamide so this reaction is important this has been asked in need also okay uh, next point is anomalous properties of nitrogen which is very very important this I have already <coughs> uh, given the reason of nitrogen showing anomalous behavior that important reason is absence of the orbitals other reasons for anomalous behavior of nitrogen are its small size high electronegativity high ionizing energy and that I have already mentioned non availability of the orbitals due to these reasons nitrogen shows anomalous behavior from rest of the members of group 15 elements means nitrogen and phosphorus arsenic between from these rest of the members of group 15 nitrogen shows some uh, different behaviors from uh, some different uh, characters you, you know you can say from these elements that is called anomalous behavior or an anomalous properties okay 
some examples are given here nitrogen forms p pi p pi multiple bonds heavier elements of this group means phosphorus arsenic antimony bismuth they do not form this p pi p pi bond instead of this p pi p pi bond these elements these elements form d pi p pi bond okay but nitrogen forms p pi p pi bond because nitrogen nitrogen <coughs> do not have d bond d subcell therefore nitrogen cannot form this d pi p pi bond okay <coughs> okay next important point is nitrogen exists as a diatomic molecule with a triple bond between the two atoms consequently its bone enthalpy or you can say bone dissociation energy is very very high that is 941.4 kilojoule per mole and hence nitrogen is chemically inert since it its bond dissociation enthalpy is very very high it is very difficult to break this bond so it requires a large amount of energy so it is not easy to break this bond so nitrogen is chemically inert while uh, rest of the members are not so inert okay these are some properties okay then let us move to the next important topic of group 15 that is nitric acid HNO3 this is very very important uh, this is industrial preparation of nitric acid which is called Oswald's process first of all nitrogen is you know heated with oxygen that is oxidation of actually combustion or you can say uh, ammonia not nitrogen we can take nitrogen also here but ammonia and oxygen react somewhat easier remember when nitrogen and oxygen they react they only react at 2000 kelvin right i have already mentioned and this is very very tough but when ammonia and oxygen they are reacted okay that happens at 500 kelvin this is comparatively lesser energy right uh, lesser uh, temperature okay so uh, nitrogen and oxygen they are reacted at 500 kelvin and nine bar with the, the presence of this catalyst platinum rhodium gag and uh, they form nitric oxide and in the second step this nitrogen oxide nitric oxide is further oxidized to NO2 NO2 is nitrogen dioxide and in the third step this NO2 is reacted with water to form our nitric acid so along with this nitric acid a gas is evolved that is nitric oxide so we can so we can collect this gas and uh, we can continue from the second step to produce more nitric oxide right so uh, this is the reason why this Oswald's process is used as industrial preparation industrial preparation is nothing but uh, if we want to prepare large amount of a substance then we call that kind of preparation as industrial preparation or you can say commercial preparation okay so uh, in the third step since nitric oxide gas comes out so we can collect that gas uh, after collecting our this nitric acid okay and the gas can be collected and reused in the second step without going through the first step okay uh, only requirement will be our oxygen and oxygen is easily available in the atmosphere that can be collected by fractional distillation okay so this is the industrial preparation of nitric oxide which is a nit nitric acid which is very important for examination point of view and uh, suppose if we want to prepare some amount of nitric oxide ni nitric acid in the laboratory then we can follow this step uh, sodium nitrate is reacted with sulfuric acid to form our nitric acid in some lesser amount okay okay then next is our you know uh, properties of nitric acid which is not so important please note down this also now the activity with metals and reactivity with non metals okay with metals there are two important metals which will react with nitric acid uh, these two elements are copper and zinc 
right copper uh, let me simplify this reaction uh, this is copper again copper then zinc again zinc and if it is reacted with HNO3 and this is our dilute right and this is reacted with HNO3 and in this case this is our concentrated HNO3 again zinc reacts with HNO3 dilute HNO3 concentrated right <clears throat> now in this case in all the cases two products are common that is copper nitrate copper nitrate zinc nitrate zinc nitrate okay these are given in the reactions okay zinc nitrate copper nitrate copper nitrate zinc nitrate zinc nitrate and the second product common product will be water in all the four reactions water will also be produced the difference is the oxide of nitrogen produced in this reaction okay in the first case when copper is reacted with dilute HNO3 NO nitric oxide is produced while in case of concentrated HNO3 NO2 is produced with dilute HNO3 N2O nitrous oxide is produced while with concentrated HNO3 zinc produces NO2 so let me uh, let me make these reactions easier with concentrated HNO3 the oxide produced are you know nitrogen dioxide right nitrogen dioxide in, in, in both cases nitrogen dioxide is produced with concentrated HNO3 while with with dilute HNO3 copper produces nitric oxide while with zinc produces nitrous oxide this is the way to memorize this reaction okay uh, in all four the cases in all the four cases uh, with copper copper nitrate will be formed this is our copper nitrate while with zinc zinc nitrate will also be formed right along with water here also water okay okay now let me move to the next property this is with non metals now there are four non metals important non metals iodine carbon sulfur and phosphorus and they react with nitric acid in this case also nitrogen dioxide and water nitrogen dioxide water okay <coughs> sulfur also nitrogen dioxide in water with phosphorus also nitrogen dioxide in water these are common byproducts okay or common products with iodine we get iodic acid HiO3 with carbon carbon dioxide is formed with sulfur sulfuric acid is formed with phosphorus phosphoric acid is formed okay please memorize these reactions this is uh, again important for examination point of view next is brown ring test video sikara this hang eh adubu ay sige keno simadi cover tau gena khale war su wan adum yeng biro okay brown ring test si nitrogen ko nitrate ion sorry nitrate ion present oi oi the have confirm tau naba test amani in this test any compound containing nitrate ion this is nitrate ion no three minus this can be copper nitrate this can be nitric acid hno3 okay this can be sodium nitrate aduga kana ga reaction ton ba fe2 plus amuga reaction ton ba fe2 plus amuga reaction ton ba habidi kai no any salt solution containing this fe2 plus ion ferrous ion okay this can be feso4 okay for example and in presence of an acid reaction to han ba matam da then we will get our nitric oxide then Fe2 uh, Fe plus is oxidized to Fe3 plus and well, along with water. Now this nitric oxide is reacted with this complex FeH2O whole 6 2 plus and this complex is formed. This in this complex one of the water is displaced by NOS ligand. So uh, this complex the color of this complex formed will be brown okay 
So if brown ring in the form of a ring, right, in the form of a ring, this will be appeared. And if some brown ring test is appeared, then the compound contain nitrate ion, right? This is brown ring test. And this has been asked in uh, council exam also. Okay, next is ammonia. Ammonia. Ammonia in the laboratory, ammonia can be prepared by ammonium chloride with sodium hydroxide. Ammonia is formed. And this can be <coughs> prepared by reacting by reacting magnesium nitride with water. Ammonia is formed. Here also, ammonia is formed. And uh, this is the industrial preparation for ammonia that is called Haber's process. Nitrogen and hydrogen gas, they are heated at uh, 700 Kelvin, the pressure of 200 Pascal, 200 into 10 power 5 Pascal, that is 200 atm approximately or 200 bar. And the catalyst used in this reaction is iron oxide with small amounts of K2O and the aluminum oxide. These oxides acts as, um, you know, promoter and the iron oxide as catalyst, right. And these three, three are optimum conditions of Haber's process. Again, important reaction, <coughs> important of council exam and the CBSC. Okay, so ammonia is basic in nature. This nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons. So this can be given to water to form ammonium hydroxide. Uh, in the chemical properties of reaction, these first two reactions are important. When ammonia is taken in excess and if it is reacted with chlorine, then two compounds are produced that is ammonium chloride and nitrogen. And please observe here, if ammonia is taken in excess, then both the products contain nitrogen, right? And if chlorine is taken in excess in this reaction with ammonia, then NCl3 and the HCl are formed. And again, notice that in the two products, chlorine is present, okay? So these are some other reactions of ammonia. These are complex formation of ammonia by reacting with these ions. These are precipitation reaction when ferric chloride, ferric chloride is reacted with aqueous solution of ammonia. Aqueous solution of ammonia is here. Aqueous solution of ammonia produces ammonium hydroxide. This is ammonium hydroxide. That is aqueous solution of ammonia, okay. Then a brown PPT is formed with aluminum chloride, white PPT is formed, right? Similarly, with this CrO3, CrCl3, sorry, a green PPT is formed, right? Next is, next important property, next important uh, part of this, you know, video is phosphorus, a lot drops of phosphorus, this is important. In allotropes of phosphorus, we have two important allotropes that is white phosphorus and red phosphorus. Black phosphorus is not so important. See the translucent oiba call. Translucent oiba. White wax sea solid oil. This is extremely reactive. White phosphorus is extremely reactive and this is poisonous. And uh, this white phosphorus is not soluble in water, but it is soluble in carbon disulfide. This is important property of white phosphorus. And the uh, difference between white phosphorus and red phosphorus can be asked in the exam uh, in terms of solubility or in terms of reactivity, okay? Uh, red for this, is, this glows in dark. If we place in a dark room this white phosphorus, then it will glow. That is called chemiluminescence, right? Uh, red phosphorus, sina, white phosphorus, they give 573 Kelvin, the heat the umtun pang yevako. Other ma poisonous oide, water the as well as kaida, carbon disulfide soluble oide red phosphorus. So this property and this property, they can be, you know, asked in the exam in the form of comparison, okay? Red phosphorus is found in the form of polymer, polymeric chain. Right. While uh, black phosphorus has two forms, alpha black phosphorus and beta black phosphorus. Right. This is not so important, but, but please note down these points also. Okay. Next is compounds of phosphorus, that is phosphine. Phosphine is pH3. These are some uh, preparation reactions of phosphine. 
and that these are some properties of phosphine. Holmes signal is that signal which is being used in uh, in C when some um, you can say a ship is in danger they give out some signal that signal is called Holmes, Holmes signal okay and that signal phosphine is used okay next important point about this uh, compounds is compounds of you can say group 15 elements phosphorus halides and uh, in phosphorus halides for example i can just write pcl3 and pcl5 right so these are the some preparation reactions of these halides pcl3 and pcl5 by reacting phosphorus with chlorine and socl2 socl2 is thionyl chloride okay then next are the properties of these halides of phosphorus with water with acetic acid you know this OH this is an organic reaction in which CH3 C double bond O OH is reacted with PCl3 then this OH is being replaced by Cl so this is our product this is acyl chloride acyl chloride or you can say acid chloride this is here okay okay with silver with tin with now uh, here are some reactions and when this is also again important reaction what with the question can be like this what happens when pcl5 is heated so we can answer when pcl5 is heated it decomposes into pcl3 and chlorine so you can write this reaction okay okay now the last topic of this video and this uh, nitrogen family is oxo acids of phosphorus again this topic is important oxo acid of phosphorus okay uh, these are the some oxo acids of phosphorus h3po2 hypophosphorus acid h3po3 phosphorus acid h3po4 orthophosphoric acid h4p2o6 hypophosphoric acid and uh, there is there are also some uh, oxo acids of phosphorus h4 okay h4 p2o7 pyrophosphoric acid hpo3 metaphosphoric acid this can be written in a better way like this okay okay now in exam uh, question can be uh, the basicity of these oxo acids right and um, structure can be asked in the exam right structure so here are some structures of this oxo acids these are some structures which can be asked in the exam this is phosphoric acid there is a uh, phosphorus oxygen double bond and uh, oh 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 so basicity basicity is the number of a replaceable hydrogen and those hydrogen can be replaced which are attached to oxygen directly right so basicity of this orthophosphoric acid will be 3 and this is our phosphorus acid or you can say orthophosphorus acid uh, out of these three hydrogens only two hydrogens are attached to oxygen while this hydrogen which is directly attached to phosphorus this is not ionizable so in basicity we must include only these two hydrogens so basicity of this phosphorus acid will be two and this is hypophosphorus acid and in case of hypophosphorus acid basicity is only one since this hydrogen which is attached to oxygen can only be displaceable while these two hydrogens are not displaceable okay one important point in the uh, this is another uh, structure of H4P2O7. Uh, H4P2O7, all the four hydrogen atoms are attached to oxygen, so basicity of this oxo acid of phosphorus will be 4. Okay, so now, now one important question that can be asked in the exam is reducing nature. Reducing nature, so by 
explaining this after explaining this point let me end this video for today now reducing nature of oxo acid of phosphorus depends upon the number of number of ph bond directly proportional you can say ph bond here is the number of ph bond here will be its reducing nature so in this two oxo acids of phosphorus in this three oxo acids of phosphorus number of ph bond is highest in this uh, hypophosphorus acid uh, two ph bonds are present here while in orthophosphorus acid only one ph bond is present so between these two oxo acids uh, reducing nature will be higher for this h2 h3po2 okay while uh, order can be like this h3po4 the gi h3po3 heli then h3po2 lakan but this will be the order of reducing increasing order of reducing nature of these oxo acids okay uh, for today let me end this video video sikara sangre adubu thank you for bearing with me uh, please like this video share to your friends and if you are new to the channel please subscribe to the channel thank you